Um, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good start to your week. Again, I'm going to wait until the little scrolling uh, turns over. Do, 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 do. Um, so today is Tuesday. And like every Tuesday, I'm coming at you with more tips for um, marketing your business on social media, on content, strategies, how to write stuff, things like that. So I've been getting a couple questions recently about um, how to use Instagram for your business. So disclaimer up front, I haven't used Instagram specifically for my business. I did do a bunch of research on this. I spent a few hours um, reading articles. I purchased a couple classes to try and get the ins and outs of it. So I really want to make sure I'm giving you something that's uh, good information on this. Uh, side note, if you do ever research this stuff, make sure that you're researching the most recent things. So look for um, blogs that say, you know, 2021 Instagram help or things like that. So just as a quick side note. All right, so Instagram. I've had a couple bookkeepers ask me about this, um, in part because I think they feel confused because they're already hesitant on Facebook. They're just like, well, how interesting is talking about bookkeeping? Again, because you're solving a problem, solving a problem is very attractive. We like having problems solved. We want our lives to be easier. So don't worry about that. You can still be interesting even with um, writing about bookkeeping. I know sometimes it feels a little weird. Um, and then with Instagram, there's the extra challenge of how do I share interesting pictures when it comes to bookkeeping? How do I make that work? So for what it's worth, if you scroll down to the bottom on this live um, video, you're going to find five links that I found of bookkeepers who actually do really well on Instagram. Um, they are beautiful. They are well put together. Uh, they have brand colors all put together. So the best way to learn how to do this, and I'll get into it more, is to follow people and to look at people who are doing it well. So if you're thinking about trying to market your business on Instagram, that's a good place to start. Check out those links get a feel for how they do it and, and learn from it. Anyway, so why should you bother with Instagram for your bookkeeping business? Um, well, there's lots of reasons. One, your target market may be on there. The Instagram market skews a little female. It's usually a slightly younger uh, demographic. So if that's the kind of client that you're going for, uh, that's great. Um, also, people do spend time on Instagram. 30 minutes a day, they're on Instagram. Um, and it keeps going up. Instagram is popular, it keeps increasing in popularity, so that's a good sign if you do want to have a platform to be invested in. So are your people there? Is it growing? Are they spending time on there? Yes. Um, another thing is businesses do get seen on there. 81% um, of people, they say they use Instagram to research services and products before they sign up, so they're checking you out there, social proof. Um, and 60% of people say they discover new products on Instagram. So even though they may be scrolling for, you know, pictures or dog photos, whatever, they're going to come across your stuff in the mix too. And then they're like, oh, I just realized that my business does need, you know, like financial stuff. So um, 200 million Instagrammers visit at least one pro pro business profile every day. So they are checking out businesses on here. Um, and also Instagram itself as a website, not even as an app, but on, as a website, it's the sixth most visited site on the web. So there's a lot of people going here. There's a lot of action going on and businesses do get seen here and get results from here. So um, like I, I kind of touched on this a second ago, but you know, a pushback I get sometimes is, well, who's looking for a bookkeeper on Instagram? They're not going to care about my bookkeeping content. They're just going to skip it and scroll past to everything else. Um, not necessarily. Uh, and also, if this is where their eyeballs are, think about it like with the commercial. You're not going to go seek out a video about, you know, like, I don't know, a deep fried, deep fried turkey roaster. But if it pops up on a commercial of your favorite show, all right, you're looking at it. And it may, you know, if Thanksgiving's coming up, it's like, oh, maybe I want this. So you see how that works? You're in the place where their eyes are. Um, and again, if you look at the content, if you look at the links that I have in the bottom of this description, you're going to see that some people do this really well. You can do this in a very interesting, beautiful way, even if it's bookkeeping. I know that feels like a barrier, but it's it's been done many times. Another thing to keep in mind, um, if you are still uncertain about getting on Instagram as a bookkeeper, here's the good thing. Not many bookkeepers are on there. So you guys know I have this this uh, this resource where I went out and I have like, I think it's like 90 some bookkeeper websites. And I also listed out their social media links 
All of them are pretty much on Facebook and LinkedIn, but very few of them that I saw on that list have an Instagram account. So this may be an opportunity for you to be in a place where it's not so flooded. You may be able to stand out better if you learn how to do it. So it is a different way of connecting with people. I'm going to get into that a little bit. There's a very simple strategy to do this. Um, and actually, if you're thinking about Twitter, Twitter's very similar. Anyways, um, there is ways to get connected to do this well and to get results from this, I promise. Even though you're a bookkeeper and you feel like you're not sure what that looks like. So I want you to remember one thing though. There are so many social media platforms. You do not have to be on all of them. If you're invested in Facebook and you feel like your people are there and you're starting to get results, fine. Don't worry about this. My business was built pretty much exclusively on Facebook. That's okay. It's all about picking the one or two platforms where you're where you can really focus. You want to get a deeper dive on fewer platforms. You don't want to be spread across 15 of them, okay? I promise you, you will you will find enough on one or two platforms providing you're in the right place. You know, if you're trying to find, you know, like investors on Snapchat or something like that, where the market skews really young, maybe not, but you get what I'm saying. So that's why it's a good idea to do this on, sorry, <laughs> to do this on Instagram. So I will talk about setting up your profile. It's pretty much the same stuff we've talked about before. Uh, if you're just setting it up from scratch, make sure when you do set it up, switch it to a business account. Um, I think it defaults to a, a, a personal account, but you can switch it to a business account. This will allow you if you want to later to do paid ads. So it has to be business to do paid ads. Um, add your contact information, fill out your bio. Now on Instagram, you just have a real small little text area to fill out some information. The best way, and I'm going to keep um, going back to this as, uh, throughout the live, the best way to get ideas of how you want this little tiny bio field where it's like one or two lines, you, you have the same on your Facebook profile, um, is to look at other people who are doing this well. Again, I have linked in the description um, uh, some, some bookkeepers who do this well. Look how they've set up their bio section on their Instagram um, profile, their, their, their Instagram page. Um, what you want to do basically is add your help statement. Um, you know, I help blank achieve or avoid blank so that they can blank. So for example, my help statement actually is working on something in my Canva earlier. Um, I help accountants and bookkeepers double their client base with strategic social media content. See, there you go. I'm telling you who I help. I'm telling you how I make their lives better and how I do it, right? Very simple. Um, you want them to know how you're helping them. And then you're always going to want to include some kind of link in that bio. If your link is too long for your website or your lead magnet or whatever you want them to go to next after seeing that link, you can always shorten it with something like bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y, it's a link shortener. You can always shorten it if you need it to match the character link, but make sure to include a link. Remember, um, the sales process takes multiple touches. It's like five to 20 touches and them being on your Instagram page is just one touch. And so if you can get them to come deeper into your world, into your website, into your lead magnet, again, you're bringing them closer to wanting to work with you. So make sure that you make that step for them very easy. Include that in your bio. Um, make sure to add a good profile picture or logo, of course. Um, connect it to your Facebook page. Of course, Instagram and Facebook are connected, so use that connection. Um, and then, once you have your profile set up, this is where you're going to want to do some homework. You're going to want to do some market research. And I know that's kind of a, it's a term used so often it kind of loses its meaning. But really what you're doing is, the beautiful thing about social media marketing is that the examples are just everywhere. It's so easy to go out and find stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to find other financial professionals. You're going to find other bookkeepers who do this well. Again, I've got it linked in the description of this video down at the bottom of all the, of all the stuff that I have in there. Go look at their profiles. Look at ones similar to theirs. Focus on the ones. Remember, number of followers is not what we're concerned about. We're concerned about engagement. So I don't care if they have a million followers. If no one posts on their pictures, they have no comments, they don't have any likes. No one really cares. No one's going to be engaged. 
If you want someone to get to the point where they buy from you, they need to be engaged with you. So you want to find out what is engaging them with other bookkeepers. How can I do that? So this is where you're doing market research. You've got your profile set up and you're going to look out uh, at other bookkeepers. You can search this by hashtags. This is where this, it starts to get really different from, uh, from Facebook in that sense. And I'll get into more like how you connect with um, potential clients and new people. Um, it's really a different strategy. It's been very interesting for me to, to learn more about. Um, and the good thing is when you start to look up these people, when you find someone that looks promising, you're going to see that, you know, it has like the blue follow button, right? Well, look for the little button next to the follow button, that arrow. If you drop it down, it'll suggest people similar to the person that you're, you're viewing. So look and see who has a lot of engagement on their profile and see how you want to incorporate that into your content. They're doing something that's working. So mimic it, use it. Again, all the information is out there. It's great. Um, so now I want to talk more about um, about posting because you want to make sure that as you're getting connected with people you have content on your your profile on your page you want them to see that you are active you're putting good stuff out you're putting an attractive feed out so I'm gonna talk about posting first um, of course the question that everyone wants to know is how often should I post they want to know what time of day to post and there is no perfect number. There's no clear answer. I've researched this all over the place. <laughs> and the short answer is whatever you can do consistently and well. Some companies post 30 times a day and they get great engagement. Some people post a couple of times a week and they get great engagement. Um, the most important things to keep in mind is being consistent with quality posts. The average from research is that on average brands post 1.5 times a day. So I would say if you post once a day, you're doing just fine. Okay. Um, uh, even, okay. So you guys, if you guys have heard of Neil Patel, he's amazing with social media stuff. I devour his content. He's very good at the social media ins and outs. Um, the, and what he emphasizes is consistency. He's like, if you're going to, Put things out 10 times a day and then scale back to you know just once a week it'll throw off your audience they won't know what to do, what that means or what to do be consistent consistent is so important in you really have to think long term what can i do consistently in general shoot for once a day um okay so what to post about and what to write um instagram of course is very image heavy but you do have captions the caption does have a limit, but you've got a lot of wiggle room, 2,200 characters. It's a long time. You do have a point before it cuts off. And so in general, research shows that um, something between 138 and 150 characters, basically the amount of text that shows before it turns into the dot, 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 and then you have to click that to read the rest, those do pretty good. However, there's a caveat. Long form content, and that can be sales pages, that can be emails. Long form content is funny. We live in this world where we expect the shortest content delivered fastest to be the one that rules it all, that you know, that it's the most effective. But not always. We still, if the story is good, if it gives us the right benefit, longer posts, longer captions, if you're telling a good story or being genuinely helpful, longer posts can have higher engagement. So this is where it gets confusing and I don't want you to get too worried about putting the entirely perfect word count. You know, there are days where just doing a sentence is going to be perfectly fine for your content. Maybe there's another day where you'll want to put more of a detailed tip, like three top tips or, you know, a how-to and here's, here's the four steps to go from X to Y, things like that. Don't be afraid of putting something out a little longer because the longer post, as long as it serves a purpose, solves a problem, tells a good story, it can have higher engagement. So don't get too hung up on length. Um, again, shoot for being consistent. Um, and then again, I'm going to keep pointing you back to the market research that you need to do at the beginning. It will inform you so much and will give you such a great starting place to work from. I've used this analogy before, but you guys know I like to watercolor paint. and 
when I first started out, I literally was just looking up watercolor pictures that I liked and trying to copy them stroke for stroke. I didn't care. I just wanted to copy these pictures to see if I could do it. And then I started making changes. Now, caveat, I'm not telling you to copy and post these um, these posts. What I'm saying is they will give you ideas on how to structure it. So mimic, but don't copy. Does that make sense? Um, that's okay. This is how you learn. They, you know, their content is all over it. That's the point of this. It's the beauty of it. So go and learn from it. Learn from it for free. Um, learn from these like um, influencers, I guess. Um, and pay attention when you're looking through their posts what gets the biggest engagement? What gets the most comments? This is the kind of stuff you want to incorporate into what you share. Um, now in general, the, the concepts that I've got in the social media content membership that you guys know I have, uh, which by the way, now has LinkedIn linked content. Anyways, back to <laughs> returning from commercial. Um, the, uh, the general idea of content remains the same. You want to connect with people by sharing yourself as a person, um, and you also want to engage them. You want to share questions and polls and get them to comment. Of course, it helps your algorithm, it helps your visibility, it helps you get to know each other as people. You want to provide value. They, You want them to think of you as someone who um, is an expert in their field that, can, that you can solve their problems, so you want to help provide answers to their problems, uh, offer, you know, lead magnets, things of that nature, and sales. If you want them to buy from you, you got to ask. And again, if you're personal, if you help them, you can, you have basically bought the privilege to sell to them. Um, so again, that general balance of content still holds true. Um, another thing that Instagram incorporates, again, this is also kind of a Twitter thing, um, when you share the posts, make sure that you include about five to nine hashtags. You can put 30 in there. You don't need to stuff all 30 in there. It's kind of jammed up. Um, try and pick five to nine that um, fit the content you're talking about, that has some traffic, and um, I'll get more into that in a second. But Hashtags are basically indexing. It's basically the Google search of Instagram. So not only that, but people can actually follow a hashtag. So you can follow a profile. You can also follow a hashtag. You can follow hashtag motivation Monday hashtag, and you can follow that instead of a specific profile. So there are ways you can be strategic about it. So make sure that you leverage that in your post, include the hashtags for that, that indexing power. Okay. So I want to touch real quick on different types of posts because honestly, this was helpful for me um, because social media changes and stuff all the time. All right, so you have the basic images. Uh, you also have videos. So they're 60 seconds long. You usually want them to be shorter. People don't usually watch 60, the full 60 seconds. Um, there are stories, just like Facebook. It's got primo you know, location right at the top of the, the Instagram feed. Fantastic, you want to be up there. They're only viewable for 24 hours, and you can get away with lower quality of stuff. Um, and quick side note, even that animated stuff, you can do all of that in Canva. You can do Instagram stories, Facebook stories, things like that. You can do those like fun animations and professional effects in Canva for free. So keep that in mind as I keep going forward. Um, you don't have to try and do it. There, there's templates for you. <laughs> Um, you can do interactive things through your stories too, like adding polls and stuff like that. Um, there's also another feature. I don't know how much you guys are familiar with Instagram, but some of the pages, some of the Instagram business pages, um, they have these things called story highlights and they are the little bubbles. So it's not on your feed. It's when you go into someone's page or profile, you have, you know, up at the top, you know, their profile picture and their bio, and then these little circles. And then the square grid of like their pictures and feed, right? Well, these square circles, those are called Instagram story highlights. Now, what are these? Um, these are a really helpful way to make your branding look more professional. They can group content that's on your page. So it kind of acts as links almost to certain categories. So for example, you, there are ways to do it where 
for example, uh, like a clothing store, they can have a little icon that goes to just pictures of their men's clothing, pictures of their women's clothing, pictures of kids' clothing. You see how I mean it? How it like helps break things down, helps people navigate the feed more easily than just the waterfall of <laughs> pictures. Um, you can do this too. Um, from a business perspective, some businesses I've seen, I think it's really smart, they have reviews and testimonials as one of their little um, highlight bubbles. So all you have to do is add a, a current Instagram story or an archive Instagram story and add it um, as a highlight. And then when you add it as a highlight, it will give you the option of which category you want it under. It's super easy to deal with and um, it will prompt you to ask what picture you want as the cover. And once again, look at the links I have below. You'll see examples of how they have consistent photos. Say your brand color is yellow, and then they all uh, have a yellow background, all of the pictures. So that it looks very cohesive and clean and, and professional. So it's not hard to do. Again, that's something you can do in Canva. Make a square photo of something, you know, if you're doing testimonials, you know, say you take a white icon of a star on a yellow background, you type testimonial as the highlight uh, category, and boom, there you go. Now people who are on your Instagram can see reviews. That's great. That's amazing social proof, easily accessible. You want everything to be easy. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. I really like that. And reels. Reels? I didn't, you, <laughs> I don't understand them. They look like fun. It's basically Instagram's response to TikTok. So it's a, it's 15 to 30 second clips of movies that you can set to music. I think they're fun and funny. The people I've seen do it are really entertaining, but I really don't think you need to jump into it for your business to succeed. It's okay. And it's actually shown that just the photos, they, um, the photo is actually the most staying power. So even if you feel like that's all you can do is like photos, maybe some like animation and stuff like that, that's okay. So um, I wanna get back to like the, the Canva, right? Here's what's beautiful about Canva. There's a free membership so you can give it a shot. Also pre-made templates, yay! You can sort them by color to match your brand. Again, you can like go in, you can type in, you know, like I want to create like, you know, an Instagram post and it'll pop up automatically sized, great. And then they'll have Instagram post templates. Fantastic. And then you can sort those posts by color. I do this all the time. Yellow is my brand color and it's so helpful. Um, and also, even if all you're doing is like making sure you add your color, that's great. Research says that color increases brand recognition by 80%. They're more likely to engage with you this way. And in Canva, you don't even have to worry about like providing like high quality pictures. Built in the Canva is unsplash photos. There's high quality stock photos that come with it and you can just mix and match if you need to. It's okay. Um, there's, I try to go into like the whole <laughs> deep dive on <laughs> how to compose a picture. Um, there are a lot of things to keep in mind. You could Google that forever and ever and ever. Try and make something that's bright. Make sure that your colors are consistent um, and that your text is clear and readable when you have it. Um, there's all of these things. There's the mood, there's the lighting. Um, does your grid, you know, the squares below, does the grid work together? Like you could go crazy with this stuff. Color theory, photography basics. My best, my best advice to you is again, go to the ones who do it well. Look at the templates they use, look at the, the strategies they put together, mimic them, use, use the information. Um, just focus on putting out stuff that's consistent, attractive, and matches your colors. Um, so that is <laughs> posting the kinds of post stuff like that. So hopefully that helped demystify it. It was actually really helpful for me to, <laughs> to, uh, to do this. Okay. Now I want to get to the more important part because connecting on Instagram is very different than connecting on Facebook. You can't just go out and join groups. Groups aren't a thing here. So how do you get connected? How do you find people? How do you get people to connect with you who may buy from you? What does that look like? It's different from Facebook and um, Twitter is actually very similar. So again, 
if that's a platform you're considering. Um, so one thing about connecting, some people ask, well, can't I just buy followers? And again, technically, yes, you can, but you don't want to. Um, the whole purpose is to have people who are engaged with you. Your follower number isn't that important. It really isn't. You want you know, people who are engaged. I don't have a very big audience on my page or in my group. Just a couple of hundred people. I am busy, but I have a very engaged group of people. I have a very engaged people on my profile, people on my group. The engagement is what matters. So another thing is if you do want to have like analytics that help you as you grow, if that's your jam, well, here's the thing. If you purchase followers, that screws up your analytics later. So all these people that, you know, can, you know, you bought off of a list, you can, but if you're trying to evaluate later where to double down, that the people in that pool will screw up helping you focus your, the future of your campaign. So thinking long-term, it's not great. Um, so that's a note to that. Uh, the most basic thing you can do when it comes to um, getting people to connect with you who would be interested in what you do Remember those people I told you about who like have, you know, are already established and have people commenting on their posts. This is another part of why it's important to connect with them. Um, what you're going to do, this is a manual process, but it works. Just work it, be consistent with it. Um, go follow these people, follow these people who are in your field, these other bookkeepers and accountants who are very engaged on Instagram and stuff like that. Follow them and then pay attention who's liking on their posts, who's commenting on their posts. And everyone who is, start following them. Follow, follow, follow. It doesn't take a long time. Go through someone's profile, make sure that the people that are leaving comments, engage, stuff like that, they are showing to you that this is, co this is content that they're interested in. So go follow them. And they'll get a notification. There's a chance that they'll follow you back. And then you're um, you're, you, you will be on their radar as you post content. They'll be more aware of it and probably have a higher chance of interest in it. You see, this is, this is the, what's so important about finding these guys, this kind of market research. It really helps. So not everyone will follow you back. That's okay. Um, there's no perfect number for how many people to follow, but I've, the courses range between like 30 and 50 people a day. And you are just, because you're just trying to build from scratch. You really are. So you just friend, you just follow, follow, follow. Don't DM them. Don't DM them. Just hit the follow button and let it take its course from there. It's manual, but you're slowly building um, an organic audience that matches um, the interest of what you do, right? Here's another good side effect of it. In the process of going through these influencer posts and following these followers, you are getting exposed to all of these good posts and you're going to be soaking up what these guys do well and better able to emulate it in your business. Pretty great, right? Um, so that is the most basic way to do it. Another way you can do it is you can use hashtags. Um, make sure, again, like I said, um, to find, to. Uh, include hashtags in your posts, you know, include the hashtag for bookkeeping, bookkeeper, things of that nature. Um, you can also type in, you know, you can type in a few hashtags on Instagram, how many people are following it. Now, if you do something like, you know, motivation, you know, it's like, how many posts are on that, like millions or something like that. So the first thought is, oh, a million people are using this. This is exactly what I want in there. Uh, maybe not so much. You want to find something that has volume that people are searching for and, 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 and using, but you don't want something that everybody's using because if you're hoping to get discovered that way, if a million other people are posting about it, you're going to get lost. It gets washed away a lot faster on, you know, like the, the timeline for that topic. So there is a balance and a strategy for it, figuring out what works. Um, so do a little research. Again, go to the influencers. What are the hashtags they're using? What works for them? Why are they picking these hashtags? Things of that nature. So make sure that you use them. Um, this is a way to make sure that you're basically searchable, that people can find you if they like look for a bookkeeper and things of that nature. Um, and then 
if you want to try and get reposted like on a on an influencer account specifically one that probably has clients that suits you the best way you can do that is give them a reason to repost you and the easiest way to do that is to post a mini testimonial so let's say you took uh, another um, uh, Veronica Wasek, there's a name, you know, she's a big name. She, I'm not sure if it's on Instagram, but this is just an example. <laughs> she's a big name in the e-commerce field. So she has courses and lives and lots of resources. So what you can do, if you maybe are an e-commerce bookkeeper and you want to get in front of her audience, if she has an Instagram, I'm not sure, um, you talk about her, you tag her in your post, you uh, post a picture of, you know, say someone has a book or something like that, give them a good picture, tag them in the post and talk them up. Then they have an incentive to put your face on their timeline, right? To put your handle, put your on their timeline. And then you get this bump of visibility, this bump of credibility by doing it. But what you have to do, again, you have to keep in mind what would make someone like that want to repost me, put me on their timeline, if it benefits them. Guess what? I mean, a testimonial does that. Um, so those are the best ways to start getting connected, right? So anyways, that is what I have for you. Again, if you, if you already feel like you're on a million, <laughs> thank you, Erin. <laughs> if you already feel like you have um, just a million platforms you need to be on, this isn't about trying to get on one more platform so then you have like a six platform. It's not about that. But if you feel like this is where your clients are and you just don't know how to get started, this is just how to get your feet off the ground. Get your profile started, get posting, and start connecting with people. This stuff takes time to build, um, but this is where you start. So again, uh, I have links to some great bookkeeper um, accounts on Instagram. They're beautiful, they're informative, they have personality. So that's a great place to start. Again, learn from them for you. Um, and you guys know about the other stuff I have. My content membership is always around for you guys, 97 bucks a month. And I just added LinkedIn length content. I'm so excited about it. Um, so if you're trying to post on LinkedIn, but the stuff I've been writing has been too long, guess what? We've got shorter posts for you now to make things easier. I'm so excited. Um, so, so that's out there. And I'm just working on a whole bunch of other stuff for you guys behind the scenes. I'm so excited about it. I just finished a new lead magnet today and there's just so many things. I'm just so excited. Anyways, I hope that helps. That's Instagram stuff. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, and, or if you like any suggestions for courses or books or things like that, just let me know. I'd be happy to help. All right. I am going to go, but I hope you have a lovely Tuesday and I will see you next week. Bye.